Remembering Shireen Abu Akhla, Honoring a Courageous Journalist's Legacy Shireen Abu Akhla, Arabic, April 3, 1971 to May 11, 2022, was a highly regarded Palestinian-American journalist who dedicated 25 years of her life to reporting for the Arabic-language channel Al Jazeera. Tragically, she lost her life while covering a military operation in the Janin refugee camp in the West Bank when she was shot and killed by an Israeli soldier. Abu Akhla's journalistic work spanned decades and was deeply influential in the Israeli-occupied Palestinian territories. She was widely recognized as a leading journalist in the Arab world and served as a role model, particularly for aspiring Palestinian and Arab journalists, including women. On May 11, 2022, Shireen Abu Akhla was reporting on an Israeli military operation in the Janin refugee camp. She was wearing a press vest, clearly identifying her as a journalist. Tragically, during her coverage, she was shot and killed. Israel initially denied responsibility for her death, suggesting Palestinian militants might have been responsible. However, reports from her colleagues on the ground pointed to Israeli soldiers as the cause. Israel later admitted, on September 5, that she had likely been accidentally hit by its forces but declined to initiate a criminal investigation. Multiple international news outlets, including the New York Times, the Washington Post, and CNN, conducted investigations and concluded that her death resulted from a targeted Israeli killing. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights and the US State Department also found Israel responsible. Forensic architecture challenged Israel's findings and asserted that Shireen Abu Akhla had been deliberately targeted and denied medical aid. In November 2022, the U.S. Department of Justice initiated an investigation into her killing, a move Israel rejected and refused to cooperate with. Shireen Abu Akhla's niece, Lena Abu Akhla, has been advocating for accountability for the Israeli soldier responsible for her aunt's death. The circumstances of her death and the subsequent disruptions during her funeral garnered widespread international condemnation of Israel. During the funeral procession, Israeli police officers confronted pallbearers carrying her coffin, using batons and stun grenades. The St. Joseph Hospital in East Jerusalem, where her body was being transported from, was stormed by Israeli police, resulting in violence against patients and medical staff. The hospital issued a statement on behalf of the Christian Churches of the Holy Land, condemning the invasion and disproportionate use of force by the Israeli police as a severe violation of international norms, including the fundamental right of freedom of religion. Tens of thousands of Palestinians attended her funeral, carrying flags and chanting nationalist songs. It is considered to be the largest Palestinian funeral in Jerusalem in over two decades. Shireen Abu Akhla's legacy lives on in the hearts of those who admired her courage and dedication to journalism. Shireen Abu Akhla was born in Jerusalem in 1971 to Loli and Nashri Abu Akhli. She hailed from a Palestinian Arab Christian, Melkite Catholic, family originally from Bethlehem. She spent some of her early years in the United States and obtained U.S. citizenship through her mother's family, who resided in New Jersey. Tragically, both of Shireen Abu Akhla's parents passed away when she was at a young age. She had one brother as a sibling. For her early education, Abu Akhla attended Rosary Sisters High School in Bihanina. After completing her secondary education, she began her higher education journey at the Jordan University of Science and Technology with a focus on architecture. However, she later decided to change her academic path and transferred to Yarmouk University in Jordan, where she ultimately earned a bachelor's degree in print journalism. Following her graduation, Shireen Abu Akhla returned to Palestine, where she embarked on her impactful career as a journalist. Shireen Abu Akhla was deeply committed to her career in journalism, with a strong desire to be close to people and amplify their voices. She believed in the power of journalism to bring the realities of individuals to the world's attention. Her career was marked by her dedication and fearless reporting. Abu Akhla's journey in journalism included roles with Radio Monte Carlo and Voice of Palestine. She also contributed her skills and passion to significant organizations such as UNRWA, United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, the Amman Satellite Channel, and MIFTA, 
the Palestinian Initiative for the Promotion of Global Dialogue and Democracy. In 1997, Shireen Abu Akhla joined Al Jazeera, where she became one of the network's first field correspondents. She gained recognition and popularity for her reporting on Al Jazeera's Arabic language channel. Her base in East Jerusalem allowed her to cover crucial events related to Palestine, including the Second Intifada, and she delved into Israeli politics as well. She was known for her coverage of Palestinian funerals for individuals who had lost their lives in encounters with Israeli forces. Her work was not without challenges. Abu Akhla covered significant events, such as the Battle of Jenin in 2002 and various Israeli operations in the Gaza Strip. She even had the unique opportunity to interview long-term Palestinian prisoners at Shikma Prison in 2005, making her the first Arab journalist allowed inside. Throughout her career, she expressed concerns about being targeted by the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, and Israeli settlers. She faced accusations by Israeli authorities of photographing security areas. Despite the risks and challenges, Shireen Abu Akhla continued her career with Al Jazeera until her tragic death in 2022. In July 2021, she was poised to be the first Al Jazeera journalist to broadcast live from Cairo as relations between Egypt and Qatar improved. At the time of her passing, she was studying Hebrew to better understand narratives in the Israeli media and had recently earned a diploma in digital media. Her remarkable career served as an inspiration for many Palestinians and Arabs who aspired to become journalists. Her live television reporting and unique sign-offs made her a well-known figure. Following her untimely death, she was celebrated as a household name among Palestinians by the New York Times and NPR. The Times of Israel referred to her as a veteran journalist and one of the most prominent figures in Arab media. The BBC recognized her as widely admired and respected by both viewers and colleagues. Shireen Abu Akhla's legacy continues through the United Nations announcement of the renaming of their annual training program to the Shireen Abu Akhla Training Program for Palestinian Broadcasters and Journalists on May 31, 2022. The tragic death of Shireen Abu Akhla occurred during her courageous work as a journalist. She was reporting on an Israeli Defense Forces IDF, raid in Janine Camp on May 11, 2022. The Palestinian Health Ministry announced her passing and she was 51 years old at the time. Witnesses in Al Jazeera, the network she was associated with, reported that Shireen Abu Akhla was shot and killed by the IDF while covering the raid. Al Jazeera accused Israel of deliberately targeting her. She was shot in the head and subsequently transported to Ibn Sina Hospital, where she was pronounced dead. Another journalist, Ali Samodi, was also shot but survived while two other Palestinians were transported to a hospital in moderate condition. According to reports, Shireen Abu Akhla and her colleagues had come under fire from Israeli snipers while they were covering the incident. Even after she was struck, the shooting continued, making it challenging for others to reach her. An autopsy conducted at Inuja National University was unable to definitively determine who had fired the fatal shot. It was confirmed that she was killed by an armor-piercing bullet that struck her in the back of the head, exiting through her forehead and causing skull fractures and brain damage. The bullet was recovered and sent for further examination. This tragic incident shocked the world and led to widespread condemnation. Shireen Abu Akhla's commitment to journalism and her courage in reporting from the field will be remembered and honored. Her death serves as a poignant reminder of the risks that journalists often face in their pursuit of truth and their dedication to sharing the stories of those affected by conflict. The aftermath of Shireen Abu Akhla's tragic death was marked by various developments and responses. Israeli raid on her home, Israeli forces conducted a raid on Abu Akhla's home after her death. During this operation, they confiscated Palestinian flags and prevented the playing of nationalistic songs. This action was seen as an affront to her memory and her Palestinian identity. Public mourning and tributes, thousands of people gathered in Ramallah to pay their respects to Shireen Abu Akhla. Her body was transported to Al Jazeera's offices in Ramallah, where colleagues, friends, and family could bid her a final farewell. 
The outpouring of support and grief demonstrated the profound impact of her work and her commitment to journalism. Journalist Solidarity, the alternative syndicate of the press in Beirut, Lebanon, gathered to honor Shireen Abu Akhla. This demonstration of solidarity highlighted the recognition of her as a respected journalist and the deep sense of loss within the journalistic community. Confrontations in Bait Hanina, Shireen Abu Akhla's hometown of Bait Hanina witnessed confrontations between Palestinians and Israeli soldiers. At least five Palestinians were injured, and at least three were detained during these clashes. A crowd gathered in front of her home to protest her tragic killing, reflecting the anger and sorrow felt by her local community. The aftermath of Shireen Abu Akhla's death was marked by a mix of mourning, protests, and international condemnation. Her passing served as a stark reminder of the risks journalists face in conflict zones and their vital role in bringing critical stories to the world's attention. The funeral of journalist Shireen Abu Akhla was a solemn and emotional event, marked by several notable occurrences and developments. State Funeral and Procession The Palestinian Authority organized a state funeral procession for Shireen Abu Akhla, scheduled to be held on May 12, 2022, in Ramallah. The procession began at the Palestinian presidential headquarters, and President Mahmoud Abbas of the State of Palestine was expected to attend. However, Israeli authorities had certain conditions for the funeral procession, including restrictions on Palestinian flags, slogans, and chanting. Funeral route Babu Akhla's body was transported from Jenin through Nablus and Ramallah to her funeral in Jerusalem. Her funeral took place in East Jerusalem on May 13, with thousands of mourners attending, many carrying Palestinian flags. Confrontations and Israeli police actions the funeral procession was marred by confrontations between mourners and Israeli police. Mourners insisted on carrying her coffin on their shoulders, a common practice in Palestinian funerals. Israeli police attempted to prevent the display of Palestinian flags and chanted slogans. They alleged that the crowd was disrupting public order. Video evidence showed Israeli police officers using force against mourners and even within the St. Joseph Hospital, where the funeral began. International reactions The European Union expressed its strong disapproval of the violence during the funeral, citing the disproportionate use of force by Israeli police. Christian churches of the Holy Land described the police actions as a severe violation of international norms and regulations. The Israeli Health Ministry pledged to review the violence at the funeral, but there was no contact with the hospital director as of May 24. Internal Investigation The Israel Police conducted an internal investigation into the conduct of police officers at the funeral. The results were delivered to Police Commissioner Kobi Shabtai and Public Security Minister Omer Barlev. The investigation reportedly found police misconduct, but there was no disciplinary action taken. Shireen Abu Akhla's funeral became a site of both mourning and anger, with confrontations between mourners and Israeli police. The international community and various organizations expressed concerns about the use of force during the funeral procession. Shireen Abu Akhla's tragic death evoked a significant international response and condemnation from various quarters. Al Jazeera, the network strongly condemned her killing, describing it as a horrifying crime that breaches international norms and one committed in cold blood. Al Jazeera's managing director called for a transparent investigation. Palestinian leadership, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas held Israeli forces fully responsible for Abu Akhla's death. Hussein al-Sheikh, Secretary General of the PLO's Executive Committee, criticized the silencing of the word and attributed her death to the bullets of the Israeli occupation. United States, the U.S. ambassador to Israel and the State Department condemned the killing, with a call for a thorough investigation and accountability. United Nations, the U.N. Special Rapporteur on Palestine and several U.N. human rights experts expressed concern, with suggestions that her death might constitute a war crime under international law. A unanimous UN Security Council resolution demanded an immediate, thorough, transparent, and impartial investigation into her killing. Media and press freedom organizations Several media and press freedom organizations, including the Committee to Protect Journalists, 
Reporters Without Borders, and the International Federation of Journalists condemned the killing and called for investigations into the targeting of journalists by Israeli forces. International Diplomatic Responses Many countries, including Kuwait, Egypt, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Djibouti, China, Iran, and South Africa, issued statements condemning Abu Akhla's killing. Protests and demonstrations, her death was protested across numerous cities globally during Nakba Day commemorations. Artists for Palestine UK released an open letter signed by over 100 artists condemning Israel's actions. U.S. government involvement, a letter from Senate Democrats pressed the Biden administration to investigate the killing. Senators John Ossoff and Mitt Romney issued a bipartisan demand for an independent investigation. Families advocacy, Abu Akhla's family met with American Secretary of State Antony Blinken, advocating for a U.S. investigation that leads to accountability. The tragic incident stirred international outrage and calls for accountability, press freedom, and justice. It also led to discussions regarding the rules of engagement by Israeli forces and the need for transparency and accountability in such cases. The investigations into Shireen Abu Akhla's death involved several stages, with differing initial claims and accounts. Initial claims by Israeli authorities, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett initially blamed Palestinian gunmen for Abu Akhla's death based on a video posted by the Israeli military. However, subsequent investigations would raise doubts about this claim. B'Selem's findings, human rights organization B'Selem conducted an investigation that documented the locations of both the Palestinian militants depicted in the video and the site where Abu Akhla was killed. Their findings showed that the two locations were separated by a considerable distance, with multiple walls and buildings in between. Selimus investigation concluded that it was impossible for the Palestinian fighters to have hit Abu Akhla or anyone near her. Israeli military chief statement, Lieutenant Genevieve Kokavi, the Israeli military chief, later stated that they could not determine by whose fire Abu Akhla was harmed and expressed regret for her death. This indicated a shift from the initial Israeli claims. Comparison of footage the Intercept reported that the Israeli army released body camera footage showing that its forces were fired upon by Palestinian militants. A comparison with video recorded by a B'Tselem researcher later confirmed that Israeli soldiers had been at the end of the alley where the Palestinian militant had been filmed firing. The Israeli soldiers emerged onto the same street where Abu Akhla was shot. This raised doubts about the Israeli narrative. Israeli IDF's video release, the Israeli Defense Forces, IDF, released a video showing Palestinian gunmen firing in the Janine camp, purportedly in the area where Abu Akhla was killed. In the video, a militant was heard saying that they had hit a soldier. As no Israeli soldiers were injured during the operation, Israeli authorities suggested that the Palestinians had shot Abu Akhla by mistake, thinking she was a soldier. However, the possibility of this scenario was questioned due to the blocked line of sight between the militant and the reporter. Eyewitness accounts, multiple eyewitnesses, including journalists who were with Abu Akhla at the time of her death, disputed Israeli statements. They reported that the area had been relatively quiet before her death, with no exchange of fire. The investigations raised concerns about the initial Israeli claims and cast doubt on whether Abu Akhla's death was a result of Palestinian gunfire. The circumstances surrounding her death remained a subject of investigation and discussion, with various sources presenting conflicting narratives. Subsequent investigations into the death of Shireen Abu Akhla have yielded various findings, but there is ongoing debate and a lack of consensus regarding the circumstances of her death. Bellingcat Analysis, the independent investigative group Bellingcat conducted a video and audio analysis, which concluded that Israeli fire was likely responsible for Abu Akhla's death. They noted that the shooting appeared slow and deliberate, suggesting targeting rather than indiscriminate gunfire. Al Jazeera Bullet Analysis, Al Jazeera reported that they obtained an image of the bullet that killed Abu Akhla, and ballistic and forensic experts identified it as a green-tipped bullet designed to pierce armor and consistent with the 5.56mm caliber used in M4 rifles, which are frequently employed by both Israeli forces and Palestinian fighters. 
B'Selem investigation, the Israeli human rights organization B'Selem conducted an investigation and played a significant role in causing the Israeli military to backtrack from its initial claims that Palestinian gunmen were responsible for Abu Akhla's death. Associated Press Reconstruction, the Associated Press conducted a reconstruction of events, which indicated that the bullet that killed Abu Akhla likely came from an Israeli gun. However, it acknowledged that a conclusive answer was challenging to attain due to the limited access to evidence from both sides. CNN Investigation CNN reviewed videos, interviewed eyewitnesses, and consulted a firearms expert, concluding that new evidence suggested Abu Akhla was shot in a targeted attack by Israeli forces. Palestinian Investigation The Palestinian Authority conducted its own investigation, which concluded that the IDF directly and deliberately targeted Abu Akhla. Israel denied this accusation. U.S. involvement, the United States, after pressure from Congress members, urged the Palestinian Authority to release the bullet for tests. The Palestinian Public Prosecutor's Office subsequently handed the bullet to a specialized U.S. team of experts for technical examination, with the testing taking place at the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. Israeli IDF's investigation, the IDF initiated an investigation, acknowledging that one of its soldiers was in the vicinity when Abu Akhla was killed. However, they stated that a criminal investigation was not required and cited a lack of suspicion of criminality. United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights On June 24, the office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights stated that Abu Akhla was killed by a bullet fired by the IDF and expressed concern that Israeli authorities had not conducted a criminal investigation. Joint Investigation by al Haq and Forensic Architecture A joint investigation released by al Haq and Forensic Architecture concluded that Abu Akhla and her colleagues were deliberately targeted by Israel. The investigations and findings from various sources have not led to a consensus on the circumstances surrounding Abu Akhla's death. Debates persist, and there is ongoing international pressure for a transparent and impartial investigation to determine the responsible parties. The U.S. Department of Justice's decision to open an investigation into the killing of Shireen Abu Akhla was announced on November 15, 2022. This decision created tensions between the United States and Israel, as Defense Minister Benny Gantz strongly criticized the investigation, describing it as a grave mistake. Gantz emphasized that the Israeli Defense Forces, IDF, had already conducted an independent and professional investigation, the details of which were shared with American representatives. He also expressed Israel's firm stance of standing behind IDF soldiers and rejecting external interference or investigations. The Israeli government was informed that the decision to open the investigation did not come from the White House or the State Department, but from the FBI itself. In response to the announcement of the investigation, 19 House Democrats introduced standalone legislation known as the Justice for Shireen Act, which calls for a report on the circumstances of Shireen Abu Akhla's killing. Amnesty International also issued a statement emphasizing the need for accountability stating that Israel should not be allowed to act with impunity. The investigation opened by the U.S. Department of Justice reflects international pressure for transparency and accountability in cases involving the killing of journalists. The outcome of this investigation will be closely watched, as it has the potential to impact relations between the United States and Israel. The case of Shireen Abu Akhla's killing has been referred to the International Criminal Court ICC, by multiple parties. On May 23, the Palestinian foreign minister, Riyad al-Maliki, announced that Shireen Abu Akhla's case, along with evidence of other Israeli violations, had been submitted to the prosecutor of the ICC. On May 26, Al Jazeera announced its intention to file a case with the ICC, covering the killing of Shireen Abu Akhla, the Israeli bombing and destruction of Al Jazeera's office in Gaza in May 2021, and continuous incitements and attacks on its journalists operating in the occupied Palestinian territories. The family of Shireen Abu Akhla provided permission for the case of her killing to be submitted to the ICC. On September 20, a joint investigation by al Haq and Forensic Architecture concluded that Abu Akhla and her colleagues were victims of Israel's deliberate targeting. Lawyers and advocacy groups referred the shooting to the ICC on behalf of her family. 
On December 6, Al Jazeera submitted new evidence and filed a separate formal complaint with the ICC against Israeli forces regarding the killing of Shireen Abu Akhla. In response to these referrals, the United States and Israeli officials expressed objections to the ICC investigations. The United States has long protested the ICC investigation in Palestine, emphasizing that the ICC should focus on the punishment and prevention of atrocity crimes. Israeli officials, including former Prime Minister Yair Lapid, have also criticized the ICC's involvement in cases involving Israeli military soldiers and have rejected any external interference in Israel's military operations. Shireen Abu Akhla's legacy continues to be honored and remembered. Friends and family of Shireen Abu Akhla renewed calls for justice and accountability over her death on the anniversary of her passing. They continue to seek justice for her and other journalists killed by military personnel. The Committee to Protect Journalists, CPJ, released a report highlighting the killings of at least 20 journalists, including 18 Palestinians, by military personnel that have gone unaccounted for since 2001. This report serves as a testament to the importance of addressing such incidents. A memorial concert was held in Ramallah to celebrate Shireen Abu Akhla's life and career in the media. The concert was attended by hundreds of people and featured music composed in her memory, performed by young women from the Edward Said National Conservatory of Music and a girls' choir from Jerusalem. Several universities have announced awards and scholarships in Shireen Abu Akhla's name, further supporting aspiring journalists in her honor. A street in Ramallah has been named after Shireen Abu Akhla, ensuring that her name and memory remain a part of the local landscape. An upcoming media museum, set to open in 2025, will also bear Shireen Abu Akhla's name, ensuring that her contributions to journalism and her legacy are remembered and celebrated for generations to come.